Let's take a couple of minutes and we'll do an overview of the system settings on the AVIC 5000 next. We can get to the system settings by touching the gears here and we, were gonna, we wanna go to the toolbox up here. We'll start off with our navigation related, sa related settings and we can open that up and we have the navigation info window which is a bar across the bottom of the screen. We can choose to turn that on or off and then we have the uh, AV and app guide mode which is we can choose to turn on or off as well and that is when you don't have navigation on the screen and you're in either app mode or in the audio video mode when navigation has a turn to tell you about it'll open up a window and tell you that where that turn is so you can choose to have that turned on or off we'll go back up next up is our uh, AV source settings and uh, we have our mix track settings here and for more information on mix track settings you can uh, take a look at the mix tracks video next up is our radio settings where we can change our local level you can get more information on that uh, with the with the radio video and then we have our Sirius XM settings and you can go through the full list of those settings with the Sirius XM video. Next up is our tag forwarding. So when we're listening to the radio or Sirius XM where we can tag a song and be reminded that we liked it and, and offered to buy it later, we can forward those tags to USB 1 or USB 2. So wherever you tend to plug in your iPod or your iPhone, USB 1 or 2 is where you want to have the tags forwarded to. Next up uh, is Bluetooth audio as a source. We can have that listed in our sourced uh, drop-down list or we can take that out. I'd certainly like to use Bluetooth audio. I'll keep that in my source list. We'll go back up. Next up is uh, Everscroll and right now Everscroll is turned off. If I choose to switch Everscroll on, that means when there is text that will scroll across the screen, it will continuously scroll. If you only want to see it scroll across the screen a couple of times and then stop, choose to uh, set Everscroll off. Next up is our input and output settings. And we have a couple of things going on here. First is our smartphone setup. So if you're going to connect a smartphone to your 5000, this is an important place to get that information correct. If you're going to connect an iPhone, uh, you can choose that. If you're going to connect another device other than iPhone, you would uh, use this setting here. So we'll switch that back to iPhone. And then if you are going to connect through USB, or through the VGA adapter, Apple's Lightning to VGA adapter, or wirelessly through Bluetooth, you can make those settings here. And we'll choose uh, USB for right now. Depending on what settings you choose up here under device and connection, different things will light up here, letting you know what type of functions will be available to you while you're driving. So we'll go back up. Next up is our AV input. And the AV input on this system can be used as a camera input, a second camera input, or as an audio video input. So the system has a dedicated backup camera input that will automatically switch on when you put your vehicle in reverse and it can be used with a second camera. If you want you can use that AV input as a source as well. And if we use that as a source that'll show up in our source list. We're going to switch that to camera right now or we can switch them both off. Next up is our auxiliary input setting and right now that is switched on. If you use auxiliary input on a regular basis you can leave that on. You can also switch it off and auxiliary input will not show up in your uh, AV source list if you have that switched off. We'll switch it back on for right now. And next up is our app radio video adjustment. When you're using Pioneer's app radio mode to operate apps on your screen, you can adjust the way the picture looks here. We'll go back up. Uh, let's see, we're on to our camera settings. Uh, camera view right now is off, so if we're using the AV input as a camera, we can choose to switch that camera view on or off right here. Uh, we have a dedicated backup camera input that right now is turned off. We can choose to switch that on. And when it's switched on, we need to choose what type of uh, uh, input will switch it on, either a battery or a ground input from the vehicle. Next up is our parking assist guidelines, and we can choose to switch those on or off. We'll switch them on for right now. Parking assist guidelines are when you put the vehicle in reverse and your backup camera switches on and you can see what's behind you, we can see the parking assist guidelines. If you're using a camera that has its own guidelines, you'll probably want to switch this off. If you're using a camera that does not have parking assist guidelines, switch this on and then we can adjust the way the guidelines look right here by just uh, grabbing any of these nodes and dragging them around on the screen. Once you're done making those adjustments, you can move back. And we'll go back up. 
and we are at our demo mode. Right now, demo mode is turned off. You can switch demo mode on or off right here. And we have, we'll scroll down a little further. Next up is our system language. Right now, it's set to English. You have a number of other languages to choose from. If you don't speak those other languages, it might be a good idea to keep it on English. We can restore our settings here, and we can choose what type of resettings to restore to factory default, or all of them here. Next up is our keyboard. Right now it's set to English. We can choose a number of other uh, settings there. We'll choose English for right now. Then we have our beep tone. That's the beep you hear when I touch the screen. We can choose to turn that on or off. Next up is our picture adjustment. And we have a number of different picture adjustments that we can see here. This is our source picture adjustment where we can change the brightness, contrast, dimmer, and so forth. If we touch that button, we uh, have our rear camera and we touch that button again, our second camera, yeah, we can choose to make adjustments to two different cameras and the source, depending on what button you've chosen up there. We'll go back up. Next up is our touch panel calibration. If you touch this selection, you'll be prompted to uh, touch the screen in a number of different places to uh, calibrate the touch panel on the system. Next is our system information where we can get information about firmware updates and initiate a firmware update. And here are two very important settings uh, for installation of the system. The first is 3D calibration status, and the next is connection status. So we'll touch 3D calibration. This is a navigation system built in here, and the, the system has to learn about the motion of your vehicle. This is where it will learn about the motion of your vehicle, and you can reset all of these things independently if you care to, uh, so that the system will uh, act as it's brand new and relearn about the motion of your vehicle. The more it learns about the motion of your vehicle, the better it will track your system during navigation. Next up is connection status. And under connection status, we can see a number of different things that can be connected to the 5000, including GPS antennas and our positioning status. We find out if our installation angle is okay, if we are using speed pulse in the system to track the vehicle, this is where we know if our illumination wire is connected and on or off at the time, and our backup trigger to, uh, to switch the backup camera on or off. And if we are using the iDatalink Maestro system for OEM integration, we would be able to check that status right here. We'll go back up and back up one more. And we are back down to our OEM settings. And again, if you're using the iDatalink Maestro, uh, with your installation, the OEM settings options will become available to you.